Now, I've been waiting to give you something for some time, Yale. Since you are nine years old, I'm ready to hand this on. It is your duty to test this game, Mass Effect 3. Now make me proud, and you let them know they don't mess with the QA department. And no, you're not allowed to date Cole McGrath. Hey, it's a Bayonetta video. Might as well have some multi-year punchlines. Man, it's rough being a Bayonetta fan. The franchise has lived in arrested development. The original was developed for the 360. Well, it was also on the PlayStation 3, but we don't talk about that one. Bayonetta is a witch with a wacky cast of friends, anime villains, and neither heaven nor hell aligns with her. Confusing to say the least. It was good, but who really cared? Certainly not Sega, because they told Team Little Angel to stop working on a second title. And out of nowhere, Nintendo says, we'll pay for it. Thus, we got Bayonetta 2 on the Wii U, which was, you know, marginally more powerful than the Xbox 360. Bayonetta had to get her friend out of the fiery pits, and the confusion goes turbo. That entry was special because it made itself the only franchise whose timeline does a complete figure eight. I also did say that it was my favorite game of all time. Now, after the defense I built, I would never take it back, but I admit I was probably a little too psyched about reaching 100 adventures. Isn't it interesting that most of my favorite games involve fighting your way through hell? And since Bayonetta 3 was deficit funded, you see, the idea is to deficit fund Bayonetta 3. Yeah, that was me. The third iteration comes to the Nintendo Switch, which is yeah, marginally more powerful than the Wii U. For a franchise that began 14 years ago, it's never really been allowed to make that huge graphical jump. Starting at number three, it looks like the typical retelling, things were good, then things were bad, but instead, it looks like it's happening now, and things are very, very bad. Beyond that, it hits the high points of any Bayonetta intro. Way too long, enemies materialize, she gets naked, Rodon provides guns for hands and feet, continues to fight for way too long, and at some point, you're finally given control. Yeah. Three iterations, and I still don't get the combo system. The games have explained it, viewers have explained it, and yet I'm playing it, and still everything is a combo. It's not bad, of course not. I'll rock an infinite combo tree. All you have to do is stay in the air as long as possible and wait for witch time. The linchpin of winning these blurs is witch time. Press ZR to dodge, slow all this down, and hit the weak points for massive damage. The enemy here is neither from Paradiso or Inferno. No, they're from another universe and looking to destroy other universes. What it boils down to is we're getting another franchise doing the multiverse thing. Let me remind everyone that I was dick riding the multiverse thing decades ago. And I'm not saying that Bayonetta doesn't have the range to do a multiverse. But when the Flash is meant to be the tentpole multiverse introduction for DC, the idea is getting a little oversaturated. I mean, it was actually time travel. But to explain away Michael Keaton's age, they call it a multiverse. I do hope Super Mario gets into the fold so that multi-year Joe can be realized. As before, they meet up in Rodon's man cave to summarize the overall mission. To wipe out the whole trinity in a snap. Snap? Oh, no, 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 no. That, that was the Infinity Saga. You're ripping off the Multiverse Saga. And just in case it's bothering you, because it's bothering me, I'm calling him Rodon, because that's what Joe Pesci calls him, despite being spelled Rodin. It's the whole Akira, Akira thing. Yeah, yeah, Japan. The game unfolds in much the same way as previous games, confusing. It's like when Sarah and I watch a movie from the 70s, and the style of editing and hard cuts makes it difficult to tell how much time has passed. There's always a point where I get lost. Dun 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 dun. Okay, we're going to Europe to get a gem, and uh... Well, that's kind of weird. Okay, what's going on? And who is this kid? Alright, we're going to an exclusive island to look for a gate to hell, and... Oh, oh, not again. What is happening? And who is this kid? Vilo and I are going to another island to grab some chaos gears, making our way up the mountain, and, uh... Ugh. You lost me. What I can glom from the plot is they're looking for gears in alternate universes where we see alternate Bayonettas. In previous BO games, there was an odd mixture of full animation and stiff posed animation. Like most anime, 
I don't understand why, but I'd like to say I appreciate that they now reserve it for only alternate Bayonetta backstories. All others are top-notch Team Angel work. Now, since other universes aren't faring too well, you'll find that other Bayonettas have their own huge beast that now need a forever home. The first had to be a gigantic spider. And I'll be the first to admit that this is uncomfortable to look at. She also borrowed the gal's weapons, like their sharing clothing, which changes the animal she transforms into. And I'll be the first to admit, I have conflicting feelings on this one. The focus of Bayonetta 3 seems to be bigger battles with larger monsters. Not that that's particularly new to the franchise. The last boss in Bayonetta was about the size of Unicron. But if you want to score that massive damage, you'll take out one of the pets, use the moon power, and use them to make the big bucks. Okay. Big problems with this. When you have one of those beasts out and in your control, the enormous wipes take more time, in the order of magnitude, compared to the smooth ballet of blurred hotness with Bayonetta herself. The monsters have combos, but it's impossible to string them together because at the same time you're swinging a tarantula scorpion claw, you gotta keep an eye on Bayonetta. The onus is still on you to dodge attacks, potentially attacks that you don't see coming because you can't see them coming. Well, I have to give partial credit to the partial solution provided by Rodan. I came across the nucleus of Talos in my second playthrough. It's an accessory that, when equipped, makes the monsters attack on their own, freeing up Bayonetta's hands and allowing you to double attack. I thought this option was too good to be true, but it's hard to argue with the results. Am I saying that I'm only good at a Bayonetta game with the game plays itself? Yes. Yes, I am saying that. And if those beasts weren't big enough, just in time for the end of each multiverse fight, Bayonetta reaches into... <sighs> okay, you lost me again. She transforms into enormous monsters, and I find it funny, but was that the intention? I mean, here, she is fighting with bubbles, and I dare not wonder where those bubbles came from. Exploration has a heavier focus, with finding animals, mother boxes, and one-off challenges, with rewards like health or moon pearls. I suppose I have some natural skill because I never used any of the moon pearls. I was too distracted trying to make a joke, like mistakenly saying I thought that turned Jigglypuff into Wigglytuff, or should I trade up to a joke about Pokemon Moon and Pearl? And imagine the hilarity if I went back to the original Bayonetta and applied it to the Gold Moon Pearl. Other characters of note, Viola is introduced into this game. I don't mind a katana-wielding, butt-rocking suicide girl fighting an alliance with Bayonetta. I do mind them changing the mechanics mid-game. Viola's Witch Time isn't activated by dodging, it's activated by blocking. Not only is the mechanic different, it's a different button. Shifting gears like that hurts my head, just waiting for the end of the level so I can go back to Bayonetta. In later playthroughs, I found there was a solution, kind of. If you wander into the options menu, you can change the controller layout for Viola to type D. Man, I've never gone as far as D in control schemes, not even in the days of Nintendo 64 shooters. Jean has 2D missions sprinkled in, and, uh, it's there. The voice of Bayonetta controversy is something that I'll have to sidestep. If the story wasn't propagated to Discord, I'd been clueless that Jennifer Hale had to be swapped in. Huh, fooled me. What should a voice actor get paid? I don't know. I keep lending my voice to these videos and it is yielding nothing. What input could I have? If it isn't easy to tell, I'm procrastinating as usual because I get sick when discussing this last point. The ending. As I mentioned before, I don't know the attitude the game is aiming for. When Duolingo makes a joke, I know it doesn't degrade the integrity of the app. Bayonetta out of nowhere gets these wacky Super Saiyan powers and violence is the name of the game. Why wouldn't you just use these all the time? It's parallel to the sword argument in Pacific Rim. Why wouldn't you just use that in the first place? The last actions have a very heavy bearing on the franchise, in stark contrast to just an hour ago where we were playing Donkey Konga as a boss fight. This is our send off and we're just supposed to be okay with this exit? Bullshit! Guys. Hell is not a pleasant place, and you generally don't get to bring your fuck buddy with you! And the final insult? No Princess Peach costume! Even before I saw how they intended to continue the series, I punched out. I'm done with this franchise. Remember my earlier comments about Bayonetta never getting that graphical jump? Well, I was gonna circle back and comment on the PlayStation 4 re-release, but no, I'm done. Yes, this is retroactive. You, out of the favorite game list. Wait, I have to get the original. Yes, these have to go too. Bayonetta, you have lost a valuable customer. With the other Bayonetta videos, I had some flimsy reason for the game pairings. This time, it's Hades, and I have no reason. 
I put so much time into it, I should justify it with a video. Ugh, this is gonna be hard to cover. Recording the middle of games is a quandary that I have wondered about before I started this YouTube channel and continue to struggle with. Some games actually give you a level selection, mostly shooters, and some allow multiple saves so you can jump between select parts as long as you plan ahead. A common case seems to be you choose one of a few slots and sometimes they autosave. These are ones you have to start over and remember what parts you want to record based off of notes. This is especially painful with long games like Zelda or Okami. Hades is an ultra special case. I am not starting over and working my way through. We'll just have to work with what I currently have. I've come to learn that this game was available in early release for years at the Epic Games Store. I only became aware of it through a YouTube push notification from Nintendo. Oh, so the Bastion guys made a Greek Gods game. Maybe it will remove that God of War 3 piss taste. And it's come to the Switch console. First? Being a longtime fanboy of the Big N, I'm just not used to such special treatment from third parties. I clocked in a couple hundred hours on the Switch, and that only ended when I got the Steam Deck. It seems to be an unwritten law that anyone who buys a Steam Deck also has to buy Hades. That's just like how it works. The consoles even allow you to sync up cloud saves with Steam. Convenient. And once that save data reached Valve servers, that was it. It became a Hades deck. But rest now, child. You have served me well. I'll record all my footage with the gaming rig. This is also my introduction to roguelikes, which is quite a popular genre with the kids these days, if it even is a genre. Uh, don't kill me if it isn't technically a genre. You see, I'm old, so I'm slow on the uptake. What does roguelike even mean? I found that it derives from a game called Rogue. Really? We're just saying it's like another game? Sorry, that's officially dumb. You know, at some point we stop calling these Doom clones. So what is the Uncle Storm analysis? I guess it is by nature a dungeon crawler. Boo. With a randomly generated structure. Boo. With power-ups that you lose in death. Boo. And really difficult. Oh, so Binding of Isaac was a roguelike? I just thought it was bad, unredeemable Zelda. I guess I just don't have a ton of experience. In the simplest explanation, Zagreus, the son of Hades, is trying to escape the place Hades, all set in the typical supergiant isometric view. He's doing this initially because he's a rebellious prick, but it turns into trying to get to the surface to find his mother. Spoiler? Not really, because even I knew that Nyx couldn't be his real mom. He jumps out of Hades and has to fight through Tartarus, I'm familiar, Asphodel, never heard of it, and Elysium. Why are we fighting in paradise? And why assembly language? Helping you along the way are the Olympians. And the whole gang is here. Zeus, Poseidon, Athena, Aphrodite, Artemis, Ares! Dionysus, Hermes, and Demeter. With support from Sisyphus, Eurydice, Patroclus, and sometimes Thanatos. Not to be confused with the cool Thanos. These characters pop in Fire Emblem style, which I've never really been a fan of. Strangest of these interactions, some characters blink, and some don't. I thought this was a limitation on the Switch. You tend to expect these with modern games on the Switch. But no, also on the PC. They help with upgrades called Boons. These are clever power-ups themed by the gods. Some increase the damage of your quick attack, strong attack, that crystal thing that you throw out, or calling them down for a super smash. Even with all their help, oh my god. Kronos, this is so hard. The event of death appropriately sends you back to Hades, and you begin the process all over again. And there you have it. That's a roguelike. You lose all the coins you can use with Charon, all Daedalus power-ups, and all the Olympian's boons. Aw, I worked hard for those. But you do get to keep the various types of in-game currency. You keep the keys that unlock the Mirror of Night and weapons. You keep the darkness that upgrades the mirror. You keep the gems to buy decorations, the nectar to bribe the gods, the diamonds to buy the music, the ambrosia to further bribe the gods, the titan blood to upgrade the weapons, and the fish for your satisfaction. And if you're stockpiling an item and low on another, don't worry, there is an exchange rate. 10 gems for a key, 5 keys for a nectar, 10 nectars for a diamond, 2 diamonds for an ambrosia, and a straight 1 to 1 conversion from ambrosia to titan blood. I guess hell doesn't use the metric system. One piece of advice I wish I had was don't bogard the nectar. Get to bribing immediately. This grants favors, unfolds a plot, reunites friends. Even though they are static, semi-blinky images, every bit of the mountain of dialogue is voiced. And very good, I might add. I would imagine when Supergiant submitted the game to Nintendo, they must have scoffed. What's with all the voiceovers? That's silly. You don't have to do that. We don't. It's not easy to describe the combat because the infernal arms are so different and how they are affected by the boons. 
I'm better with some, terrible with others. Wouldn't you know it, in this Supergiant game, the gun is actually my least favorite. Now in that trailer, Zagreus is made to look unstoppable with all of them. And speaking of the trailer that sold me, they promised me an ass-kicking soundtrack. Uh, nah. I mean, boss fights kick it up a little bit, but it's mostly just slow ditties. Even one of the mini-boss tracks sounds more like Travis Tritt. Of course, they really leaned into that Bastion song, so they probably consider Nora Jones hard rock. Hades has received what would be known as universal acclaim. Oh, you know how that goes with me. I usually don't like them. Yep, I just have to be different. Surprise! Hades is great. Hades is sublime. Hades is probably the best game on the Switch. But with a game that everyone praises, how could I possibly find something unique to say? I think the genius lies in the Faded List. Hades is not just hard for the sake of being hard. The Faded List asks you to do all kinds of crazy difficult things. At first glance, it may just look like an achievement list. Yeah, yeah, sort of. You do get actual awards. And so far beyond just beating the game. Use every badge, or put Titan blood on every weapon, or throughout the course of your attempts, use every boon from every god. Naturally, along the way, you'll find your favorite and most effective weapons, boons, badges, and buddy. Without telling you, you have just been handed the keys to beating the game. With its phenomenal popularity, Hades brought back a long forgotten favorite activity of mine, the casual game strategy discussion. Now, this isn't like most of the conversations that I'm forced into. Hey, have you played Last of Us Part 2? Nah. Oh, well, it's a pretty, pretty good game. No, this is, have you played Hades? Of course you have, how far did you get? At work, I heard a few young engineers over the cubicle wall talking about the game, and I naturally popped my head up and slipped right into the discussion. So you're saying the shield can be used to attack and defend? How do you get that to work? Another time, I was at a memorial service in another state and mentioned the game Hades to some adults. Then a group of teenagers came over and said, Hades, have you beat it yet? What weapon do you use? Oh, well, if you use Titan Blood to level up the Stygian Blade, it will raise your HP and... Now, I will never make an argument against free game guides on the internet. That is an awesome thing we have now. But these conversations reminded me of spending entire lunch periods in middle school discussing personal strategies for Pokemon Yellow, Super Mario RPG, Final Fantasy, in the golden age of Final Fantasy! There, that's my unique way of calling Hades good. Now we've come to the part of the Bayonetta video where we run the comparison. Gee, who saw this coming? A game that blew up a franchise that was doing just fine, and a game that history will remember. Of course Hades was better than Bayonetta 3. Just the question of, have you beat Hades, carries a lot of weight. When you do finally beat it, the hammer drops. Hard. Don't worry, it's not a bad ending. It's not like you push both shoulder buttons and Zagreus impales himself on the Stygian blade. Nice reference. So when you beat the game, you, you haven't beat the game. And the I sentiment is, oh man, that was this. difficult, right? Do it again. By the way, if you want any more Titan blood or Ambrosia, you can take a ball peen hammer to the face. No, 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 don't worry. You can control the speed of the swing. This Beating Hades is, is kind of a multi-layered process. There is meeting the original goal, then place. resolving the story arc, War. and last, making peace. Uh, Having played through this myself, I just wonder, how does anyone review a game this long at release? It took me about 230 attempts, but I have annihilated this game. The Fatalist? Yeah, done. Steam achievements? I got them all. Oh, and by the way, I beat Cuphead last year. Am I allowed to complain about Doom Eternal now? Hades is so good, I stuck around to do this to completion. It's so good that it began as a digital download and then was released physically. Do you understand that? It's so good, it went backwards. And not with some limited run promotion. No, no, you could go pick this up at Target. No offense to limited run. It's so good, it ruined all other roguelikes for me. Sarah bought Cult of the Lamb, and my quick review was, well, Hades was a lot more fun. And Hades didn't have bugs that occurred in normal gameplay. Now, I don't even want to try Dead Cells. It's so good, I've continued playing the game, and I have so much in-game currency. I still have a lot of things to upgrade, but I just don't want to use them. They look so beautiful. Say something, I'm giving up on you. All right, 
fully upgraded now, but I still don't have enough darkness to get the highest rank at the resource manager. According to my save file, I'm not even halfway there. Oh, Persephone, give me patience. I'll say it again. Isn't it interesting that most of my favorite games involve fighting your way through hell? My Guide to Beating Hades Fully upgrade the Stygian Blade, it will give you max health. Before Tartarus, put on the Zeus Badge so you can get the Electric Shot. Then, before Asphodel, equip the Artemis Badge and get Artemis' Call. Now, no matter what, for the rest of the game, do whatever you can to get their boons again for the chance of acquiring the Duo Power Lightning Rod. This way, your crystals inflict passive damage. Now, just run around the field avoiding enemies while the crystals do all the work. Wow. I mean, you, you figured all of that out. Like, with your brain. And I have a copy on Steam. Okay, uh, here, 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 and here, and here. Du, du hast, du hast mich 